the North American business climate minimize border disruptions. Now, of course, they call it security and prosperity, and I think the only way to really understand what they're really about is it's how to enhance corporate profitability. Uh, the public, the state, are all the way. Anything that taxes, regulates, protects labor, interferes with corporate interests. <coughs> and one of the ways of avoiding those kinds of interferences is by using uh, trade agreements to over override any state um, implemented policies. Now, of course, how do we know this is true? Well, who's attending the, the conference? Who's invited? <coughs> Discussions and treaty signing, when it happens, will involve the leaders of Canada, the United States, and Mexico, and will take place behind closed doors. 30 corporate CEOs have been invited, while opposition members of parliament, representatives of organized labor and social movements, and the general public have been excluded. So this is a secret uh, summit based on corporate profitability. And of course, if we pay too much attention to it, it might interfere with their agenda. Uh, why is the content proposed agreement, which is likely to include harmonized health and safety standards, energy development, border security measures, privatization of public services, and new military initiatives have been kept secret. Why away from the public scrutiny? Well, because if the public finds out about it, and I'll go through a lot of talk about that in a moment, they may not be happy too happy. Why do we care? Just a few examples. Canada may be net, is a net exporter of oil, but it still imports 40% of its oil, 850 million barrels a day, to meet 90% of Atlantic Canada and 40% of Ontario's needs. And so we're exporting oil to Canada, to the United States, where they're large sections, where they, they import more oil from us than they're anywhere else in the world, including Saudi Arabia. And what are we doing? We're importing oil into Ontario, Quebec, and uh, other provinces because we haven't got enough oil from our country to ship to them because we're shipping it to the U.S. Many of Eastern Can uh, Canadians heat their homes with oil. Western Canada cannot supply all Eastern Canada's needs because NAFTA, previous agreement, has been, has been called NAFTA on steroids. Um, reserves Canadian oil for American security and supply. Canada now exports 63% of oil, to oil it produces and 56% of its natural gas. And it's doing this to the United States. And we have no choice because it was built into NAFTA. It's called a proportionality agreement. Boo. Mexicans, when they signed up to NAFTA, actually could avoid the proportionality. It's only we that have locked ourselves in in ways that even the Mexicans could resist. Uh, those, those shares are locked in by NAFTA. Uh, uh, the real danger, of course, is not simply oil and natural gas. Will bulk water be next? Will we lock ourselves in with NSPP? to essentially exporting our water in for state proportionality to the Americans and lose our autonomy and our control. So the state can step in and say, we don't want to do this, but we'll sign on to NAFTA, and unless we break NAFTA, or SPP, we won't be able to resist this. We're basically tying ourselves in in deep integration way with the Americans. Away from water, oil, and what about disease? What about cancer? In 2001, Canadian industries reported the release of 18 million kilograms of known carcinogens into our air, water, and soil. Canada is about, if SBP would go through, to harmonize its regulations, setting limits for pesticides on fruit and vegetables. In 40% of the cases, the Americans allow more herbicides and pesticides, carcinogens in their food. And if we harmonize, we'll have that level of carcinogens in our food. And so the idea is not to raise the bar here in terms of the environment, the idea is to lower the Tell bar. Tell me if you see somebody come out of there. And what we would expect as we lower the bar is that there'll be more and more carcinogens in our food supply. These are just two examples. Another example is the superhighway, which is, is questioning whether it's going to happen or not. Part of the opposition to SDP is focused on plans for so-called NAFTA superhighway, actually a deregulated environmental corridor, several hundred miles wide, including rail lines, freeways, and pipelines from Mexico to the Canadian border, shipping out resources to U.S. for processing, along with cheap Mexican labor. There's a growing grassroots movements against this in the United States. Unfortunately, much of it is by the right wing. It's also worried about their autonomy. Resistance in the United States is actually quite remarkable to the SPP. Here we are, some of us out here today and other parts all over Canada. In the United States, state governments in the U.S. are becoming increasingly alarmed at the prospects of deep integration. Earlier this year, Idaho became the first state to pass it legislative resolution directing the U.S. Congress to drop out of the SPP, which is referred to as the North American Union, among U.S. opponents. Thirteen states in addition to Idaho are calling on Congress to abandon the SPP. 
I won't go through the list, Georgia, Arizona, Tennessee, Washington, Virginia, et cetera. They think uh, that what's good for corporate profits is, is not good for the U.S. necessarily, unlike our governments in both Canada and the United States and Mexico. Very briefly, Council of Canadians just took a survey of Canadians right before this new summit in New Orleans. And here's what Canadians told us in this survey. 89% of Canadians want an energy policy guaranteeing Canadian supply, protecting the environment, even if it means placing restrictions on exports and foreign ownership of Canadian supplies. 88% want a comprehensive national policy that bans bulk water exports of fresh water and recognizes water as a basic human right. As you all know, for-profit enterprise all over the world, and of course there's resistance to this all over the world. Our country, our government is not resisting this. 87% of Canadians agree Canada should set its own independent environmental health and safety standards, even if it might reduce cross-border trade with the United States. By the way, the Europeans are becoming much, much stricter with in terms of environmental uh, and carcinogens. They are beginning to ban hundreds and hundreds of them. And so there could be a real trade problem between Canada and the United States and Europe. One of the things we could do, of course, build an alliance with more progressive environmental countries like the European Union. So we wouldn't necessarily have to suffer trade losses. It's just we wouldn't be trading with the uh, environmentally damaging Americans. Of course, we're just as bad as they are. That assumes we make some changes up here. 86% of Canadians agree that the SPP should be debated in the House of Commons and submitted to a parliamentary vote. Just a couple of corporate comments. Canadian, former Canadian ambassador to the United States, Derek Rudy, op-ed in the Globe and Mail, in case you go to part of the op in the Globe and Mail, in which he states, it's time for Canada to look beyond NAFTA for effective management of our relations with the U.S. Despite the fanfare surrounding regular summits of the three national leaders, results have been meager. In other words, so far we've been too effective. They haven't got what they want out of SPP moving fast enough. And they're actually getting very frustrated. And so he's got some ideas for them. Security and Prosperity Partnership has moved at a pace that can only be described as glacial. A renewed bilateral approach need to abandon the benefits of all three countries to derive from the North American Free Trade, Free Trade Agreement. This is very consistent with the Fraser Institute report calling for a rebranding and relaunching of the SPP and the C.D. Howe Institute call for a new bilateral relationship with the U.S. that is very much deep integration and focus. And so because the SPP label has brought them trouble because people are turning out in Winnipeg and other places around the country, they still want it really, really badly. But the trouble is we're also resisting it. And it's giving them trouble. So the question is, what do they call it next? And how do they accomplish this without us sort of turning out like this? Bernie Kuchernians, a renewed commitment to North American security, as well as to energy and environmental cooperation, would complement new border management initiatives. He also suggests the new bilateral initial institution would stimulate harmonization. It would appear that the corporate consensus moving in this direction as we head to New Orleans and the SPP. Rudy's concluding comments. To write a revitalized bilateral relations, Prime Minister Harper and the new president should, as a matter of priority, agree once again to meet annually and should charge officials on both sides of the precise agenda of shared concerns. And so the SPP, in name, could be done, but the deep integration agenda is most definitely continuing. Resistance is not futile, but essential. Thank you. Woo! The yeah, but what about the chili beans? Uh, thank you, Robert, for the uh, that very exhaustive uh, presentation. Our next speaker is Steve Rao. Mm -hmm. Sierra Club.